we know we are about to ruffle a lot of feathers with this podcast. Yes, it's called COVID. Two years later, enough, enough already. already. And, and this is Chick, Chick to Chick. So it was two years ago mm -hmm. that we were sitting on this very couch, taping podcasts, just minding, minding our, our own business, business. <laughs> taping our podcasts. It was March 13th, 2020. And all of a sudden, we're like, what the hell? What is happening? What is going on? All of a sudden, the governor shutting down schools, stay at home orders. We're like, what is this? I mean, it was just supposed to be for two weeks. Two and weeks. here we are, two, two years, years later. later. Enough already. What yeah. is going on? We decided we needed to have a little retrospective and think about what has happened over the last two years. Now, we know we're mm -hmm. going to ruffle some feathers. And that's okay. It sure is okay. But we also know that some of you are going to say, right on, girls. Yeah, and the bottom line is... Every single person has been going through the human experience of navigating COVID-19. Everybody has something that has been very difficult that has happened, something that's very trying, uh, frustrated. We recognize that so many people lost loved ones, and that should never have been the case. Mm -mm. And we have questions. We have things that we don't quite understand. And we know two years later that there is more divisiveness there are more people at each other's throats than ever before, and that is simply not healthy. No, it's not healthy. It's unacceptable. You know, I know a man who isn't allowed to see his granddaughter because he decided not to get vaccinated, and now he can't see his granddaughter. I mean, why are these things happening? Why is there so much division over this, and why? Is this still going on? So right. let's be transparent here. Mm -hmm. Have you had COVID? Yes. And what was it like and what did you go through? So I had mild COVID. Um, I was able to continue treating myself just by upping some of the supplements and the vitamins that I've already been taking. Um, lots of rest. I was able to get an antiviral. And I really felt like I got through it with um, very mild issues and I'm okay. I think maybe all in total till I really felt 100%, maybe it was for two weeks. But I have to say that if COVID had never come into the language, I would have just been like, oh, I got a bug. Yeah. That's about it. It's like a cult. Now, yeah. I so far have not had COVID. I have not had COVID. That you know of. That I know of. I mean, I could have been asymptomatic and didn't know, but I have not had COVID. And trust me, I've had plenty of phone calls from <laughs> people who said, I don't know how to tell you this. And I was with them the day before and they mm -hmm. may have hugged me or whatever, but I don't know how to tell you this, but I just tested COVID, uh, positive for COVID. I've had a lot of phone calls like mm -hmm. that, and yet I haven't gotten covid Yet yeah. Now, let's rewind even beyond two years ago. Mm -hmm. It was December of 2019. Yeah. You know, we went to a conference. In New York City. In New York. Mm -hmm. And the air just felt dirty. Yeah, I it would agree. It felt dirty. Yeah. And we both looked at each other and went. We just needed to get out of there. Like, we couldn't breathe. I had a headache. I just yes. didn't feel well. And we were like, we need to get out of this. It was at the convention center. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't you know it, a week later... I got sick. You were sick for a while. I was sick for a long time. You know I was sick. Mm -hmm. And I had pretty much the symptoms mm -hmm. that we now know of as COVID. Didn't know what it was at the time. Right. You know, I knew it wasn't the flu. And my mother kept saying to me, what is with that cough? And I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't know, Mom. I don't know what this is. Mm -hmm. or, but it was about two or three weeks. And then it finally went away. So I have not had COVID now that I know of, but I have been exposed plenty of times and I didn't get sick. So what do you attribute that to? What do you think? You know, that's kind of hard to say. I do think that if you are healthy and you live a healthy lifestyle mm -hmm. to begin with, which you do as I well, do. Mm -hmm. that maybe your immune system is strong and you're able to fight this off. I can tell you, I drink lemon water every day. I take vitamins. 
Um, I exercise, I eat healthy, and here's the big thing, and you know, because I'm a Krabby Patty if I don't, I get lots of sleep. Mm -hmm. Like, I joke that I sleep like a teenager. You do. I insist on it. I get at mm -hmm. least nine hours of sleep every single night, and if I don't get it, mm -hmm. I'm just like... Foggy, I, you don't feel good. Foggy, just, I yeah. don't feel good, and I think as a whole, as a country, we don't get enough sleep and I think that helps you um, to get healthy and stay healthy and build up your immune system. So I yeah. don't know. Is that why I didn't? I don't know. But I can tell you that's my lifestyle. And I think I got it mildly because um, maybe it was because that variant, you know, just was a milder variant or it's because I do take care of myself. And that's the thing that bothers me, I think, is that I think that far too many people are not healthy. They think they are just in stature, even if they're a more slender person, that does not mean that you are healthy. That doesn't mean right. that, that you have a good immune system. You know, we went through a lot when our daughter was sick with Lyme and I learned so much about the immune system and I learned that it has deficiencies and certain things that you really need to do to keep it up and running the way it needs to, to fend off everything. The other thing I learned is so much about food, and this is something you and I tried to talk about. Yeah. We tried to talk about the level of obesity and how that correlates to the folks who are getting really sick and dying from COVID. But guess what? We couldn't get a doctor that would talk about it. We actually did have a doctor who was ready to come on the podcast to talk about obesity and the connection to COVID. But. And all of a sudden, <laughs> at the last minute, it was like his hand was slapped yeah. and he was not allowed to come on the podcast. And so this gets into some of the things that are bothersome. I think we have constantly been hearing this mixed message. You know, our children have to go to school and wear a mask mm -hmm. and social distance and their desks are three feet apart. But yet I can go to Beaver Stadium with 100,000 people sitting like this mm -hmm. and you don't have to wear a mask. Or at a restaurant. Or Right. And I think this mixed messaging, and I know somebody's going to say, oh, well, the sporting event is outdoors. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You're still on top of each other inside of a stadium, mm -hmm. but yet you don't have to or wear a mask. across from somebody at a restaurant. In that space, there's no COVID? Right. And, and, and the mixed messaging, you know, and let's get back to this whole obesity thing. Um, I want to read a couple of things, and I think this is really important. Um, this is not uh, about anti-vax. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. You are not an anti-vaxxer. Um, I think that people should be in that space, that they should be able to make decisions for themselves. Mm -hmm. But what I don't understand is why the emphasis has been on the vaccine and why we haven't put an uh, mm -hmm. emphasis on getting healthy. 100%. Why are we not advocating that? Why are we not seeing mm -hmm. PSAs to go for a walk, get exercise, do things like that? Mm -hmm. You know, according to the CDC, this is according to the CDC because I'm not a doctor and I didn't stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night, <laughs> but according to the CDC, Overweight or so severe obesity can make you more likely to get severely ill from COVID and die from it. Mm -hmm. The risk of severe COVID increases sharply with elevated BMI. People with obesity are 46% more at risk of getting COVID and getting really sick, facing a 113% higher chance of being hospitalized. Should I continue? Mm -hmm. You understand? Now, these yes. are facts from the CDC. Mm -hmm. Why have we not placed this emphasis on get up, go for a walk? Yes. Why are we saying, you know, again, it's not that we're anti-vaccine at all. It's not that. It's why when you know that obesity is a risk factor, why are we not encouraging people to go out, walk? You know, the average person gained 29 pounds during this pandemic. That is insane. 29 just, pounds. Well, here's why. Stay home, lockdown orders. You can't go and do the things you were normally going to go and do because you were, you know, protecting the health and safety of others around you. But that didn't mean that it was doing well for you. People were cooking a lot more. People were drinking a lot more. And then honestly, I think they developed a bigger sense of anxiety about everything. And anxiety will raise your cortisol levels. So all of those factors mean that our bodies 
did not do well health-wise for two years during a health crisis, and we were not addressing it the way that it needed to be addressed. So here's some food for thought, and I want you to chew on this for a moment. So during shutdown orders, gyms were closed. Right. Gyms were closed during shutdown orders, but yet I could go to the fast food restaurant to get my Big Mac and French fries because that was considered to be essential. Mm Mm-hmm. What? Does it make sense? What? Make, make it make sense. <laughs> what? So I, I can't go and exercise and get healthy and stay fit, but I can go get my Big Mac attack and French fries right. and a milkshake or whatever else because those fatty foods are essential. But wait. Doesn't make sense. How many times were you uh, told that get the vaccine and you get a free donut, get the vaccine and you get a slice of pizza, get the vaccine, fill in the blank with whatever. It was a food propaganda driven by things that are just not good for us anyway, but that's how we're enticing people. That doesn't make sense to me. And a lot of stuff that has gone on doesn't make sense. Mm. Again, I haven't had COVID yet, um, but I need not just two hands, but your hands as well to count the number of people who I personally know who were vaccinated Mm -hmm. and still got COVID. I lost two classmates literally within a week of each other, literally a week of each other in different states due to COVID. So I am very sensitive to the people who have lost a loved one and it is terrible. But I will say that I feel like we have really lost ourselves in all of this. And I don't think we're kind to each other because what it comes down to is instead of them saying, oh, I'm so sorry, are you okay? The question was, were they vaxxed? Were they not? And let me go a step further. Let's define what vaccination means. And I don't mean by COVID, but I mean by when we talk about a subset of people who have chosen for whatever the reason is that they're not going to receive the COVID-19 shot. These are not unvaccinated people, people who have had all their immunizations, their children have had all their immunizations are vaccinated people. They've just chosen that this particular shot is not something that they want for them because their risk reward is different than for those who feel vaccination was the right way to go. And that bothers me why we are looking at people as vaxxed and anti-vaxxed. Hey folks, that's a segregation. And it's not okay. It's also judging. 100% it's is judging. It's also judging. And um, why do we have the right to judge people when we try to advocate that we should be able to make our own decisions about so many things? But in this particular case, we're being told that we don't have a choice, that this is what right. we are supposed to do, and that this is the only way to fight this disease, mm-hmm. um, which I don't necessarily think is the only answer. I think that there are other options and living a healthy lifestyle. And look, just like any other disease, healthy people get sick. There are plenty of healthy people who then develop heart disease or have a heart attack. There are Mm -hmm. plenty of healthy people um, who get diabetes. This is just like any other disease. And just like any other disease, some people are going to die from it. Mm -hmm. And some people are going to survive and we cannot lose sight of the fact. And this is what the headline should be. 99% survive. Mm -hmm. 99% survive. You know, and it reminds me of of, uh, a a gentleman who I used to work with when I was covering politics at the Capitol. Mm -hmm. And he was a spokesperson for the governor. And he used to say to me all the time, he'd say, Flora, it's not what we say. Mm. It's what we don't say. Right. Right. And there's a lot in that. And too much of this is going on. I'm frustrated. I'm sure you can hear it in my voice. I think it is a shame that we are judging people so much. So it's such a divisiveness comes down to our family members. You know, there are people walking around who have lost family members due to this. There are people who have had to make choices based upon where they're going to work and how they're going to take care of their family that's based on something that they don't feel that their body needs or more importantly maybe should not have you know i have children this vaccine is not for them this shot is not a good idea for them right now and i think it's concerning because you know there's this massive judgment i think another thing that is really hard for people to appreciate is you know 
when we're told in the summertime, um, last summer, we're told by the person who runs the country that, you know, if you get this vaccine, you're good to go. The CDC said it. You're good to go. You're fine. That was the beginning of the encouragement. And yeah, why? who wouldn't want to get a vaccine that says you're going to be good and you're not going to get COVID. But as we've gone along, uh, the goalpost has been changed. Keeps moving. Constantly. To now, it. it went from you're good, you're fine, you can live your life, to yeah, it's really just supposed to keep you out of the hospital. So for the folks that vaccinated and the folks who didn't vaccinate with COVID-19, I think we can agree we're on a pretty much level playing field as far as who gets it and who gives it. That's what I'm hearing. If I'm putting all the information together, that's what I'm hearing. So I think we've <laughs> said enough. Yes. You think? I could still go on, but I think I it's know time. You can. I think it's time that we <laughs> say bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and we'll be back next week to chirp about another topic.